Good day, Africa, and welcome to another exciting edition of AU Talks. And AU Talks is brought to you by the Association of African Universities Headquarters here in Accra, Ghana. Don't forget that you can join the discussion via our social media platforms, Association of African Universities on Facebook and AAU underscore 67 on Twitter. You can also visit our TV page, www.aautv.org, and you can catch all our videos and our streams as well. And today we have a very exciting topic, which I know is going to be of great benefit to everybody on the continent. And we are discussing financing models of higher education in Africa. I will go for a short break, and when I return, I will let you know my guest. Stay tuned. My name is Chrissy Sam. Welcome back from that break, and if you just tune in, you are watching AU Talks, and AU Talks is brought to you by the Association of African Universities. Catch us live on our Facebook page, and also you can join us via Twitter using our handle AAU underscore 67, and then also our TV page as well. Before I went for this short break, I did indicate to you that today we will be discussing financing higher education in Africa. And we are privileged to have a very credible institution, and that is Brighter Investment. And they have a beautiful package for the entire continent. And so representing Brighter Investment, we have the original manager in the person of Mr. Richard Adakwa. Rich, you are welcome to AU Talks. Thank you for having me, Chris. Great. And Rich didn't come alone. He came with a beautiful lady, and she goes by the name Joy Lamte. Joy Lamte is the student success manager, also with Brighter Investment. Joy. Welcome to AU Talks. Thank you very much. How are you all doing? Fine, thank you. Great. All right, so I am super excited because um, over the years, um, financing higher education in Africa has been the greatest burden of the government. And so across all the states, the government takes a bit of, let me not say even, takes the greatest percentage of um, the education budget. And just recently, because of economic issues and also um, the other sectors also have high demand, and so the government is a bit um, tied up in providing the resources that education really needs. But then, let me very let me ask you, what are the challenges in financing education in Africa and Ghana, to be specific? Let me start with Joy, who is just right by me. <laughs> Okay, um, so I would say basically one of the challenges is the fact that um, currently we don't have like alternative sources of funding mm. for higher education. So basically we have the government taking up most of it mm. and then um, in, ad in order to um, reduce the sort of stress on them, they also try to pass this on to students in the form of school fees and mm. all that and then we see year in year out students complaining that the fees keep going, going high, high and high mm. and they are unable to meet up with the demands and so that's like one issue we have most students now ending up either being dropouts or finding it very difficult to 
actually finance their education themselves. Great. Right, do you have any other view? Yeah. What, what is the picture? Yeah, so for a normal student who comes from, let's say, rural village or even sometimes from the urban cities, struggle mm. through their life till so they hit to uh, 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 university, the start of university. And some may not even, some go to the extra mall of getting forms, but do not even uh, fulfill their admission. And um, there are NGOs available mm. supporting in providing finance, there are scholarships available. Okay. Uh, other people also get uh, support from family and friends and also some ministers to, to support that. But uh, looking at the broader picture, uh, it's not solving the whole need if you look out on the African, on the African scale. Mm. But to us, we are looking at uh, education should be seen as a form of an investment. People see education as trying to help somebody to go to school to be the it's next. A, it's a right. Yeah. But you see it as an investment. Yes, because, mm. Chrissy, if uh, you get the necessary resources for you to be successful, mm. you will come back to make very huge impact within your family and also with the society and Absolutely. the economy becomes better. Mm. So apart from only seeing education as just a right, we should also see it as a form of an investment, just mm. like... An investor will take money to invest in a real estate, to invest in a company. Mm. What about we seeing uh, the development of human resource as a form of an intentional investment, investment. To, to, to grow as well? So that is uh, the challenge said, but that is the picture we are also looking at in solving. Okay. And so that said, let, let's really understand brighter investment. What or who and what do you do? Okay, so I normally would like to start in a form of a story. Mm. Um, you see, we are in a developing country. Mm. Uh, Ghana is a developing country looking at the African population as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, in some few years to come, Africa will be having 40% of the world working force. Mm. And it's a huge success to us, but it's also a tragedy that if not prevented, we could face in the future absolutely and here lies what we have in between is education if we don't have proper education these 40 percent will go through and drop down as a mess that mm. means our economies will be messed up okay but if we have a good education in the middle that means that what people go through come out and goes up mm -hmm. to be successful mm. that means that this 40 percent of the workforce become much more relevant. Okay. So with regards to that, uh, we know that the governments are doing their best, um, but then governments do not have all the money to support mm -hmm. education on a base scale. They are doing their best. NGOs are also contributing to the factor. Mm. But then uh, you understand that brilliant students uh, in developing countries are unable to uh, assess higher education due to these challenges, making we find a lot of people on the streets. Mm. So what we do as Brighter Investment is uh, we, mobilize, we mobilize private capital to invest in the education of these students. Mm. And uh, we do that by providing their full tuition fees, hostel fee, monthly allowance, uh, mentorship mm. program throughout their course of study. And uh, when they graduate, uh, when they start working, they pay a given percentage of their income to us. This way we can also support the next cohort of students. Mm. So we see education more of an, as an intentional investment where uh, the brilliant person should be able to realize his full potential. So it's giving all the necessary resources needed to be successful. So that is how we picture uh, our model in contributing to financing the share education. Okay, so Rich, let me let me get back to you again because you made mention of the fact that you mobilize capital from from institutions. Yeah. So then, who are your partners? And in terms of your coverage, are you on the entire continent? Are you do you have a startup um, country? Where where are you at the moment? Okay, so currently uh, we raise money from impact investors mm. that want to have a vision in education that want to see that also share the same vein with everyone uh, looking or uh, making sure that education become 
uh, accessible to everyone, everyone. and also uh, foundations. Mm. So currently, these are people that are supporting us grow. But in the long run, if this model is proven, mm. then we can go to the big guys, like the pension schemes, uh, the, the banks, that we could present this as an alternative model to them that, hey, the, these people are also looking for a fair return mm -hmm. on the various investments they do, but with a good social impact. So we could present that of financing tertiary education with our mm -hmm. model, with an income sharing uh, model, means that um, they could get a fair return on their investment mm -hmm. whilst making a very valuable social impact into the lives of people as oh, well. Okay. Yeah. But then what, what is the reaction? What reaction do you get? Because I believe that you know people are a bit scared of education. It's a long term investment. Mm -hmm. It's unlike you are investing in a business where you know within the shortest possible time you get your profit. Mm -hmm. What are the reactions and the sentiment that you, you get when you, you share your vision with, with these partners? Yeah, it's it's quite interesting because these most of these partners are also employers and mm -hmm. employers also are would need, need quality quality mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. people as well. But on the investment scale, uh, they see it as much more viable because currently everybody wants to invest in a responsible venture mm -hmm. that creates impact as well. And uh, we see education as an alternative model to that. Mm -hmm. And with our income repayment model that means that investors will also get uh, a fair return um, okay. the success have been great so mm. far because uh, we've been able to support 220 students okay. we have 100% uh, repayment as in the success rate as, as mm. in the, as the in recovery the rate. Okay. rate and with that due to our success rate uh, these institutions are supporting us to support thousand students coming this September. Okay. So that means that from 220, we started small with 20 students and we've doubled each year. Mm. And now these institutions say that we can support you grow, support the next thousand students. Mm. So looking at a track record, that means that what? It's a viable investment of proven and the, the impact that's going to make mm. is going to be very, very useful to everybody as well. Okay. So Joy, let me come to you. Do you focus on private universities or public universities or you are open to any institution at all to apply for for this investment okay so um in terms of the universities and mm. the degrees that we support okay. we actually look out for those degrees that have very high potential mm. for the students that is when they graduate and they are able to get into jobs okay. so um for now we've started with supporting about six universities six of the top universities in Ghana mm -hmm. and we are already having talks with other universities because we are looking at actually supporting way more universities so mm -hmm. we're actually open to supporting both the public universities and the private and the universities. private but for a start you you are with the the, the private the public the universities public, oh we've started talks with the private universities too okay. so we are actually open to supporting like as okay. many universities as possible. Okay, but you may mention a, a very, I don't know, it's 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 debatable, because you are looking at degrees that um, when you are so much sure and have that confidence that when the graduates come out they would have jobs. Which which programs are you looking at? Is it the the arts, the sciences? Which which of the the disciplines? Okay, so the thing is, we actually conduct an annual um, salary survey. survey. Okay. Mm -hmm. So from that survey, it informs what degrees we support per time. That is every year. So from the um, results we've gotten from our data, it shows that. Um, science-related courses, that's STEM, science, mm -hmm. technology, engineering, engineering mathematics, maths, okay. and business are quite high potential degrees. So for now, we are supporting that. But then as we keep doing our research, mm -hmm. if we come across other degree areas where that show promise, then mm -hmm. we'll look to support them too. Okay. Rich, I, I am still interested in, in this area because it's quite debatable, like I said earlier. Um, and so why... Are you are you not focusing on the the art? Is it because of the fact that they have the tendency of not getting employed right after school, or it's expensive um, with the sciences? That's why you are looking at the sciences, or that is where the skill gap is, and so you are moving into much more um, as you are pushing all your resources into that area. I just want to get a fair idea, so our viewers will also get. 
the clear picture as to why your business model starts or is to some disciplines and not every discipline? Okay, so uh, we will not only say our business model mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's an economy okay. and uh, resources should flow to where value is much more created. Okay. And based on our research, most of their high potentials are coming from STEMs, mm -hmm. where employees are looking for a uh, student with critical thinking, mm -hmm. good computational analysis to employ them. So, but critical thinking, everybody needs it. Yes, everybody needs Art, it. Art, science, everyone. Yes. But then uh, you could see that employers are looking for students with uh, STEM backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as uh, an organization, we want to learn along. And mm -hmm. it's being more of an investment model we want to make sure that we've proven this model. So we want we we go by what our research shows that mm -hmm. when students offer these careers, uh, these programs, they end up uh, being successful. So that is what we want to focus and learn from. Okay. And as we grow and learn from, other uh, other areas will start to expand okay. and we also uh, push in. And as I keep saying, we are also available to other institutions that are also looking into other space that probably we are not looking at. Okay. Maybe your institution could say, Richard, look into maybe this business degrees, mm -hmm. this arts degrees. They offer good career prospects. Mm -hmm. To us, we want to make sure it's better. So what we also what we also open to look into those areas as well. So That's fine. it's not like we are science biased or mm -hmm. engineering biased, but we want to support degree programs that offer good career prospects. Uh, pay our research here, and we are also open mm. to other institutions that find interesting results that could also help us as well. Okay, that's fine. So then, um, in terms of looking at the the criteria, who is eligible? For example, then in Ghana, if you can even share with us, um, Joy, the universities that are uh, you are working with currently, if you can just mention some of them. Okay, so um, currently we are working with the University of Ghana. Ghana okay. Um, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, okay. the University for Development Studies, mm -hmm. University for Mines and Technology, mm -hmm. and then the Kumasi Technical University, University, as well as the University of Cape Coast. Okay, I was looking up to here at University <laughs> of Cape Coast, otherwise you would have been in trouble. <laughs> that, that is beautiful. And I know that after this interview, and I'm sure people are still knocking at your doors for expansion because yeah. what they're doing is so fantastic. But um, 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 Richard, let me ask you again. Who is eligible in a university? Must I have a specific GPA? Must I be a, a brilliant but needy student? What are some of the modalities that you take into consideration? Okay, so there are two points of entry in, mm. in our program. Uh, right from senior high school, if you graduate, you get admission, uh, but uh, with academic standards, uh, mm. we are looking at grade 16 or better. Okay, uh, that's after the WASI. After the WASI, mm. grade 16 or better. And this cutoff point is normally within the ranges where the programs we support, that is more the entry mm. point for students. Uh, you can't say like grade 13 to engineer, you know. So normally, uh, our cutoff points are also pegged with that of the entry point of, mm. of the degree programs we support as well, and okay. we pick the brilliance out of that. And um, the second entry point is a continuing student. So for continuing students, we look at uh, those in the upper class, and we support them, yeah. Okay, so at what point um, do you get into the, into the entire package, for example, after maybe I've completed SHS, I have um, grade 10, I apply to the university first before I apply for this funding, or I come to you before I even have the idea of of, of going into um, university. I don't know at what point, especially for the entry, the entry one point. Okay, um, so students can actually apply to us anytime, mm. but then we also have interviews that we conduct, okay. and then we, at that point, we expect that students mm. would have applied to the university because okay. we don't give the support except you have been accepted, accepted into the university. That's beautiful. So even though students can apply to us before applying to the university, it is essential that they have the university admission before mm -hmm. they actually get the support. Okay, so it's eligible to everybody yeah. in the university. Yeah. No, but, but then you should be in the STEM-related 
program. Yeah. And even the STEM, you know, it's it's so big, it's so huge. Yeah. Every cause that is related to the STEM. So someone who is reading B.Ed. Mathematics in University of Cape Coast is eligible. Uh, no, for now, no. Mm -hmm. But we have a uh, biochemistry, okay. physics. Okay, yeah. Atura sciences. Atura and, science. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. then even with the STEM, it's purely the S.T.E. <laughs> the M is just that you should have a bit of mathematics in the S.T.E. <laughs> Sure, but but apart from that, uh, adding to uh, criteria, mm -hmm. uh, they should prove uh, that they deserve it. Uh, the fact that you are brilliant and you apply doesn't mean that you automatically qualify. Okay. So we look at students that deserve it. Uh, that prove that you can't afford uh, tertiary education. And okay. Also, within our questionnaire, uh, the questions they fill, we ask them like, okay, how do you deal with adversities? Uh, feedback from uh, your senior high school teacher, mm -hmm. your lecturer. So that gives us a, a holistic picture of a student. Who the student of is. a student. And mm -hmm. as I said initially, banks do not give uh, finance to uh, students mm -hmm. because if you are going for money from bank, they'll look at your credit score. Mm -hmm. Your collateral and all yeah, those things. Yeah, but students do not have that. Mm. But what we are saying is that uh, because we see education as a form of investment, we use the character traits of a student to more of like assess credit score. Mm. So let's say I'm a student, I graduate from senior high school. If I have a good character, I know how to deal with adversities, I'm smart. That should be my credit score mm. to enable me get the necessary resources for me to be successful. Just like a business uh, looking at their uh, income flow mm. will get the necessary loan to make the business grow. Okay. So to us, so far, the student has good potential based mm. on the questionnaires filled. Mm. Then the student should get the necessary resource for the student to be successful. Okay, so if okay, so if if I come in and I fill a questionnaire, do you have any um, platform or mechanisms of verification? For example, we are in this country where we know people who are from affluent homes are still on cocoa scholarships, which is supposed to be um, a scholarship for people who are, are brilliant but needy you know that, that some of these scholarships go to people who are already who don't even need it. So uh, how do you ascertain that this person, all the information or data the person has, has given to you is, is valid and it shows for a fact that he or she needs that loan? Or sorry, that, that um, services. Okay, so just as Joy said, we do interview. So mm. it's a three-phase application, application process. Application, okay. So when the students apply on our website, we collect the data. Okay. Then we get data from the their teachers mm. and also their parents. Then we make a phone call, so every student get a phone call. So mm. we interview the parents, the teacher, and also the students. Then we look at the correlation. Okay. And for to increase the uh, the validity, we look at uh, work through other partners like the CHAS Council okay. of Heads of Assisted Schools, yeah. where they also provide us feedback on the brilliant students student. in, in their school. So okay. that gives us a, a, uh, a good idea, a good picture of the kind of students we want to support. Okay. And because it's, um, just as you said, uh, scholarships, but with us, because there's an income uh, you repay, mm -hmm. then students coming on board know that, okay, I don't know if I'm going to repay, so if I can afford already, mm -hmm. why do I need to go in for something, for something? that I okay. be, I'll be repaying? Okay. But to the person out there who has all the credits, let's say their credits called mm -hmm. good characters, brilliant, talented, mm -hmm. then the and do not have the finance needed for the person to go uh, to tertiary education, then that is what we support. Okay. And in this way, we we'll have a lot of students off the streets. Mm. Students complete senior high schools and they are selling. Because of financial issues. Yeah, they are selling what's on the streets. Mm. We did have a student that graduated, had 06, but was doing a menial job for three years to... Uh, to gain money. To gain money mm. to enter tertiary. Okay. And by the time he got money, the university fees has got... Has, has gone up. Has got up. Sure. Uh, but don't, don't at, wait for you. <laughs> don't know wait for mm. you. So look at this three-year period. He's trying to work to do that. He mm. could have, if he had gotten brighter investment in the first place, he would have been in a third year and grad, 
and mm -hmm. would have graduated and earned six times more, more than what he would if he was a SHS. Yes. Uh, uh, I mean, I must admit that your your intervention is very fantastic and it's it's really, really great. I know you have good results to show. Yeah. But my next question, I think let me come to Joy. Do parents, must parents gar be guarantors for it? Do you need to have your guardian who must guarant the, the loan? Or oh, sorry, uh, can I call it a loan? Uh, no. No, so it's an investment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so if, if I'm going, I'm coming in for this investment package, okay. must I have, because you're not doing any collateral and everything like the banks would do, yeah. but then certainly I must get someone who would really um, be a guarantor for, for this investment, right? Yeah. Okay, so who is eligible? Is it, must it be your parents or anybody at all can do it for you? Okay, so we, in terms of the guarantors, mm -hmm. we expect that the student gives us one person that is a close family relation to mm -hmm. them. It doesn't necessarily have to be the parents, but the ideal situation is it should be the parents. Mm -hmm. But we have cases where a student has lost both parents, parents okay. so we fall on maybe a close relative like an aunt, mm -hmm. an uncle, and then when we call them, we try to find out for how long the person has been taking care of mm -hmm. the students and what the relationship relationship is like between mm -hmm. them so we actually look for people that are closely related with the students in terms of default yes yeah, so the thing is we <laughs> although the big picture is not like looking at the guarantor actually paying okay. but then we are looking at that connection that exists between mm -hmm. the students and the guarantor, the guarantor okay. so that because i respect this person so much or because i wouldn't want this person to go through embarrassment mm. or pain, I will be more likely to repay. Okay. Because I think we had an interview and then you speak to some of these parents and they will call their children and tell them, you know, this is like a family thing and mm. I'm doing it to For help you. you. So you get, and in the African setting where you have a child go to school and become good, they always look back home sure. to see how they can help the family. Mm. So there's no way like a student to say, I've gotten something and then I'm leaving the house. Okay. And so that's the whole point. Because this is someone close to you, someone who has a certain level of influence over you, mm -hmm. then they are more likely to repay. Okay. Instead of just like going after the guarantor. Like, okay. So um, is there a point where you would visit the person's family to know, okay, this is where Kofi lives? This is where Amal lives, you know their residency or you don't, is, okay. it, is it important? Okay, so um, basically for now, because of like we receive lots of applications mm -hmm. and the time is quite short, we try to talk to some so, of the parents. Okay. And then because we talk to the students, the teacher and the parent, there's that, we try to see the okay. correlation between mm -hmm. what they are saying. And then we actually ask students to submit um like their house address, house we address call them okay. to confirm, confirm okay. call the parents to confirm, and mm. we also ask for evidence like documents mm. to show. Okay, things. I would want to say with that house <laughs> system in, in Ghana where <laughs> someone can just give you a house address um, in Nima, but the person will just be in a different state. Okay. But then, um, um, Rich, let me come to you concerning the, the repayment model. Mm. Um, if I'm in first year and I'm on, under this investment, Probably you are taking care of my school fees. My what, Give us the entire package again. Okay, so school fees, hostel fee, mm -hmm. your monthly allowance, and a mentorship. Okay, of how much? Depending on your the yeah, cost. We pay, we pay all your school fees. Okay. Everything? Everything. So uh, if I'm supposed to go for a trip as part of my academic work, you, I, I write back to you. Okay, so we don't have us in trips, but if students are going for internships. Okay. They get stipend during their breaks, so this money can be used for internships. That's fantastic. Stuff, yeah. Okay, so averagely, how much do you give to, uh, averagely? Mm -hmm. Because I'm asking because of the, you know, we already have such a model like the, the student loan trust fund. Mm -hmm. So averagely, how much does a student, um, do you give to a student? Okay, let's say about 40,000 within a span of their four years. Yeah. Cities? Yeah, 40,000. Oh, amazing. Viewers, you are still watching AU Talks, and AU Talks is brought to you by the Association of African Universities. Like I told you, today's discussion is very interesting because I know you have a niece, a cousin, a brother somewhere who needs financial support to be able to advance his education at the university level. We'll go for a short break. We'll be back. One of the universities set up in our pre-independence era 
the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Our international reputation has and continues to soar as a reference point in matters of science and technology, research and education. We believe that the future belongs to those who have sound technology acumen. I love USD. I love KUSD. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. If you just joined us, you are watching AU Talks, and AU Talks is brought to you by the Association of African Universities. I have Richard and Joy from Bright Eye Investment in the studio, and we are still discussing um, various ways of financing higher education in Africa, specifically um, the Bright Eye Investment approach. We've had beautiful conversations so far, and uh, let me come to you, Joy, again, because it's very crucial. When a student is on board, what happens? How do you do any interventions for them? What are the monitoring processes? Are you so strict on them that, hey, you are part of our project, you need not to do A, B, C? What goes on within that period when a student is signed up on your intervention? Okay, um, so basically we look at giving students more than money. Okay. So even though we are looking at it as an investment, mm. we don't just give them money. We are also concerned with how successful they become at the end of the day. Mm. So we have um, a mentorship program that we run. So the mentorship is divided into two. Mm. We have the Brighter Cohort Meetup, which is more like a peer mentorship program, mm. where we have senior students on the program mentor the junior students, that's those in lower levels, okay. so that they actually have good academic scores at the end of the day. Then once they get to their third year in the university, we pair them with industry professionals mm. who also mentor them like on how to stand out in the job market mm. on how to prepare themselves for the world of okay. work and with that we have uh, we actually have monthly uh, um, assignments and mm. tasks that we give students we've been able to look at their four-year journey in the university and see okay what things should they be doing every month to grow them to where we want them to be mm. so we have this structure in place and then they relate with their mentors and then they send us feedback at the end of every month so that way we are able to decide okay what student is doing well mm -hmm. what student has issues mm -hmm. and all that which student isn't performing so well i remember there was a point um, on one of those reportings mm -hmm. Um, Richard got to find out that there was a particular student whose grades were dropping. Mm. But then we didn't want that happening. But then because of the reporting system in place, we were able to identify it very fast. And then from talking to the student, we realized that the student had lost his father a year before. Oh. And so that was having a psychological effect, effect on okay. him. So after Richard had a call with him, encouraged him and all that, like in the next few months he was able to pick up again and he graduated with like a very good score mm. now because of this reporting we are able to identify when a student is going off track mm. and then we are able to bring them to order so basically That's with the beautiful. mentorship program and okay yes now i i pick one thing that let me ask bright uh, um uh, richard i don't know why i still call you bright <laughs> yes let me call um, uh, it's very important because Assuming in the course of my program, I fall sick. Um, third year, I have serious medical condition, and so I'm unable to complete within the four-year span. If I defer my program, am I still eligible, eligible to continue with your package? Yeah, so uh, technically, students have one-year break. Okay. Yeah, so they, we understand that for a female student, probably they may get pregnant or something mm. like that. So these are... Uh, flexibility are open mm. if it's a crucial moment. So that is, get pregnant if the person is married. No, no, we have this age that <laughs> once they go... Uh, yeah, but you know, some of these factors should be... They are put, obvious, you know. Should yes. be put in place. Race, race factors. So. Yeah, so we give students that benefit of the doubt, but then we don't. We are not saying that female students should go get pregnant. Mm -hmm. But in a situation this happens, the, the, the person has to 
mm. be given that space. Picking a form as an investment, or if you are working, if you are pregnant, you get a work leave. Mm -hmm. Understand? So we'll pick it in, in, in that in that side. And when okay. a student is sick as well, to uh, the, the, when the monitoring is, is, is recorded, mm -hmm. we're able to allow the student to go for the healing. Uh, currently, we are looking at models where our students could be health insured okay. throughout their process. So that uh, because we are seeing this as a more of an intentional Invest in investment, investment sure. see, just like. Um, you are growing your business mm -hmm. or you, your real estate. Every month you want to paint or every month you want to make sure that Man, everything... There's maintenance. There's maintenance. Going oh, on. my God. Yeah, so we want to, to make sure that mm -hmm. uh, education is also seen in that angle. So mm -hmm. when it's seen in that angle, resources will be flown to make sure that the educational system becomes better. So we, uh, as part of that, in terms of the health, we are looking at ways that our students can be insured medically so that when they get sick, they can... Mm -hmm. They can get uh, uh, subsidized uh, health care. Okay. Uh, your, your intervention is very fantastic, and I'm wondering which government in Africa wouldn't support you. I'm just wondering, and I don't know if you, you started from Ghana. Yeah. Have you, is the government of Ghana involved in this process? Have you seen any? Uh, and beyond Ghana, do you have plans of moving into other um, countries on the continent? Okay, it's quite interesting to know that the government of Ghana has uh, education as also their prime, Priority, prime absolutely. focus. That's mm -hmm. why you could see that uh, there is this free SHS. Free SHS. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a, a great discussion with the Minister of State Tertiary Education. Okay. And uh, there are a lot of about 50,000 students more will be living senior. I've joined the free SHS mm -hmm. program. That means that a lot of students will be graduating from senior high school. Are we going to let these people go back to their villages or not get trained? Or there's a bright future for these uh, students to also have higher education. So we are in talks with them, and it's quite interesting that we all share the same mission of making sure every child uh, gets access to quality education. And mm. also with the Ministry for Business Development, they've mm. been very supportive to to see uh, our business grow in terms of our uh, students, graduates coming out with the necessary skills needed for the for the job market as well. Because apart from the uh, student going to school, they should come out with the needs that fits the industry. This way, uh, everybody benefits as well. Okay, so let me come to to Jory, specifically on the payment model. Okay. Now, at what point after graduation, um, at what point do I start paying? And what is the int would there be interest rates if there should be? What is the rate and for people to really understand and differentiate it from what already is happening and reasons why they should join um, Brighter Investment? Okay, so um, once um, a student graduates, we understand the fact that they are supposed to go for their national service. Service one year. So they are free, like they are not expected to pay during that period. Mm -hmm. But after their um, national service, once they get a job, then they are supposed to pay 25% mm -hmm. of whatever they earn every month. So it's more like if a student earns, say, a thousand Ghana cities every mm -hmm. month, the student repays 250 out of that 1,000 every month. So yeah. that's just basically... I think it's fair. Because without works. that intervention, you may not have been in the university. Exactly. So 25% of okay. their monthly Put a income. static. Yeah. Okay. So if your income goes up, then you just pay 25% on that. And then if students are not working, then they're not supposed to mm. repay. But then that's why the mentorship program is there. They're not supposed sure to repay at all. Like, once until you're not start, working, until you start working, because it's income-based, and that's why the mentorship program is there. Okay, so let, let, let's be very as realistic. Um, I complete school. I don't find a job for two years, for three years. That wouldn't, the, the, the interest wouldn't accrue on the number of years that I have wasted, kind of. Okay, so the thing is, the ideal situation is mm -hmm. we expect that once the student is done with the national service, they get a job. And that's why first we try to support high potential degree programs mm -hmm. where... So do, do you facilitate the, the job search and placement for the student? Okay, so 
that comes with the mentorship program first. Okay. So they develop the needed skills that the employers are looking, looking for. for. Then Absolutely. the second thing is we are actually working hand in hand with industry. Mm. So we've been meeting a couple of companies in Ghana. And okay. then w- once we expand, we are also looking at that. that African to see well. if okay. we can have this sort of collaboration with them. And then um, see how we can get students in to have their internships, to have certain in um in facility visits mm. and all that so that they build that brand with brand. the company and that okay. relationship so once they graduate then they are sort of like prepared to enter into this company so Ooh. so we actually are not looking at so many years where students actually stay without jobs okay i know um, rich wants to add something to that yeah so the the way joy has said it all but just to to add it so the way our program works is whatever salary you are earning you pay 25% of it. So let's say for a full four-year degree program, let's say civil engineer uh, four-year degree program comes with a six years repayment. Mm-hmm. So what we say that every month you just pay 25% out of your income. Uh, it could be that you started with a low income, so the mm-hmm. total number of your repayments may not even be the up to the amount we supported exactly. you. Exactly. We supported mm-hmm. you. That is fine because we don't want students to end up in this huge debts that they cannot pay. So mm. it's more like an income-based repayment. Okay. But we understand that other students will also land in good jobs and their repayment will be, faster than yeah, will be, will be a little bit higher than mm. what we supported them. This way there's, there's a balance uh, in, the, in the long run. This makes us our model sustainable, sustainable. To, to support okay. the next generation. All right, so do you work directly with them, the employers of your 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 student, for example, if I complete and I'm going to work with Cowbank, I'm going to work with um, ADB. Do you do you give a letter to the employer to say that this student is on our package? And so you know, I you know that connection. I'm asking this because loans repayment is much of a problem in our system. People who take that you know that the same phase that they will come in for the loan when it comes to the payment, you won't find them. They will relocate to maybe the US, the UK, you don't hear from them. So when they start working, do you have any model which has a closer partnership with the institutions so they understand and they do that the, there's the I don't know, the standard deduction or something? Okay, How do so, you do it? So uh yeah, in the long run we look to get these deduct from source because that will okay. also increase our repayment flow. But Due to the mentorship program, we've placed students in the attitude of reporting every okay. month. So imagine you've been reporting to us every month mm. for four years. Technically, every day you may or every month you may want to check your mail. Mm-hmm. So when they are doing national service, they report to us. Okay, I'm doing national service at this place. So we get a full track of where they are. Mm. So when they start uh, making payment. So when when you get a job, okay, you have gotten a job, there's the amount of earning, then you, so for now, they go to the banks okay. to pay directly into us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've had a 100% uh, repayment success. Success, okay. But uh, regardless, we are looking at ways that we can put in structures in place as we expand, mm-hmm. where we could, um, a student can volunteer and say, okay, uh, my employer should deduct from source. That will also ease the burden of the students mm. going to look for. So we are also looking at ways that there will be multiple channels mm. and available slots for students to also repay okay. to, to us. Yeah. But Joy, for uh, now, with mm-hmm. what we are doing, students have to pay directly okay. to us, and we've gotten a hundred percent success. But that shouldn't mean that we should be <laughs> we comfortable should, with yeah, comfortable yeah. with that. And I, I, I think that the mentorship program works because then the student even feel part of the institution. Exactly. And not like I, I just get the funding and then I run away. Yeah. I feel very reluctant to to make the payment. Sure. Just as some those on the student loan trust fund feel a bit reluctant to even pay after landing themselves in a very good job. I think you guys are doing a fantastic work. This is a beautiful intervention which I believe that I, I pray you get a lot of funders and then you expand the horizon because then you have a lot of people off the street, like you said, students who have no idea about how they would even go to school would have the opportunity. But the last question I would want to put across, I'm asking about quality checks in the process because I know once you are growing, you get to a point where 
you the institutions will make a lot of connections and ties and everything where before you realize oh this is my granddaughter this is my niece um the person may not even qualify you, you understand where i'm coming from yeah. how do you ensure quality assurance how do you ensure quality process in everything that you do okay so for now within this uh within the numbers that we manage mm. uh we make sure that everything is conducted independently so if let's say if i'm reviewing i don't even check names okay i i just go straight to what you felt and that is what you are used to analyze mm. so the last part of your name will even be checked this when maybe you are on a call that will have to give you a give call. Okay. So, uh, but then we understand that some of these things happen where people could say, oh, my bed mm -hmm. deserted. But we have our system in place where, uh, as initially I talked about the scores, mm. we, we grant, uh, we do that. So this way, our algorithm um, marks students on a certain pair. Okay. So if you have your kid and you want to bring mm -hmm. him in, and the system flags it, it, it flags it, okay. it flags it, it flags, but all these processes are checked. So we are looking at uh, in the next two years, we will automate most of this. So uh, this way, like, we don't have to fiscally check and we use the various uh, uh, inputs you've made to analyze the results and we, we verify. So these are okay. more of like systems we are putting in place uh, that currently it's running. Mm -hmm. To make sure that all these things are mitigated okay but then we still do a, a follow-up checks to understand the needs of everybody mm -hmm. because apart from we providing financial needs you know because see as you talk that people mm -hmm. do not replace because probably i did not really need it mm -hmm. it's like maybe i wanted to buy an iphone with it and stuff yeah, like that yeah. you know we have cases where students uh apply you you look at the application for i need money to buy a laptop mm -hmm. <laughs> All these things will be just be flagged by, okay. the, by the, the system. system. We are looking for students that we can uh, that have uh, want to make good life mm -hmm. and that they really need funding. And to me, I believe personally, I believe that if you really need something, you get the the, the support needed. You feel that uh, repaying as part it's of a your necessity is a necessity. You. For, and uh, mm. another cross check is uh, our students have the options to be mentors when they are working. Mm. So this way, there's more of like uh, they are always part of the mm. part of the program. Yeah, I, it's a it's a beautiful model. I I have a, a classical example of such system, and it works best. And I'm so much interested in your 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 mentorship program. I believe it it works. But then, how many students can you take in a year? Okay, um, so it depends, but mm. then since we started operations, we've doubled the number every year. Okay. And this year, we actually... So September 2019, yes. how many students? 1,000. Um, 1,000 students yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. Okay, do you cater for international students? For example, I'm in Nigeria, I want to school in Ghana. Am I eligible? Or currently, it's only for... The 1,000 is only for Ghanaian students? Yes, for now it's for uh, Ghanaian students. Okay. Uh, we are looking to expand to Kenya uh, this year. Okay. But there is, uh, if you look at within the educational system, the cost of an international uh, student is higher. About, it's about three times. So mm. to support, uh, you can support three local students with one international mm -hmm. uh, student fee. So we are looking at that. These modalities. For now. But then, uh, imagine we have an educational system looking at the African scope, mm -hmm. where enough resources is pushed to make education as an investment, these students may not look at even coming to other countries mm -hmm. for education because the DS will also be better and what they'll get the necessary support needed. Yeah. Do, do you have any competitors in the market already? With the same ideas, with the same? Uh, with the, we have this, uh, uh, institutions that provide money, loans, and, loans, but not investment like yeah, but do. not investment or specifically for education. We mm. understand the government is doing very well mm. with the with the student loan mm. trust fund. Trust that's fund, sure. that's very very good. A lot mm. of students have been supported, supported over yeah. the past of the uh, the years. But now there is a demand for higher education. Mm. My my problem is those who the defaulters who don't want to pay. So if you are watching us and then you don't want to pay please make sure that you pay so that your younger brothers will have the opportunity to also benefit from the student loan transfer. It's, it's a very passionate call that I think we need to make. 
to make. And one key intervention I pick from your discussion is that you raise responsible people yeah. who feel like they have to give back much more than sure. um, just running away. But let me ask the final question because I'm getting a lot of comments and it's getting interesting. People want to know, do you go to the SHS, um, the senior high schools to do the call? For example, that is where you get the fresh people who are coming out of the university. So I'm in second year, I'm already discouraged. Even if with the science, when I complete, I won't get money to continue. But when I see brighter investment, give me that assurance, it will encourage me, motivate me to, to study harder and then pass and get such an intervention. Do you do that? That is what someone wants to know. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so for now, um, we actually try to call the heads of high schools mm -hmm. in Ghana because then we are looking at every high school that um, offers science and then business programs. Okay. So we speak to the head teachers. And technical, technical skills. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, all they are not part yeah, for now are, oh, because most of the engineers are from agri, agri, agri science. Sure. Yes. So we speak to the head teachers. What happens to my eye students? <laughs> <laughs> I believe the years will come, definitely. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. So we speak to the head teachers and tell them to give us a list mm. of students they believe are brilliant but needy, and then we try as much as possible to connect with them. Um, but then a few weeks ago, we also we are looking at actually seeing how we can go into mm -hmm. the field, actually mm. to the senior high schools, like to actually speak with them. Um, we've been having meetings with some institutions. I think we were at the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, mm -hmm. and they also have this um, field mm. work that they do. And mm. then we are looking at such partnerships so that we leverage on that and then actually go to the communities to mm. let them know what we are doing and then get more students to okay. have hope that once they are done with their senior high school, they'll be able to go to the university. Okay, so a comment that comes in is where can you be located? If I want to be part of the, the intervention, where will I find you um, brighter investment? Okay, I, I just want to add a bit of Before we come to yeah, we, Before we mm. come to that. We, are also, we also understand that various institutions in their small ways are finding ways to make sure uh, people also get education or mm -hmm. go to senior high school. So we, are, we can't do all by oh. by going to all the senior high schools mm -hmm. and making all the calls. So organizations that are able to also mobilize students that also find education as a call strong hold can also refer their brilliant students to, to, to us. Okay. Because some institutions do have students but are still thinking about ways to also uh, give them access to education. So we also open up to people as well that mm -hmm. Oh, their communities could also benefit, benefit from uh, as well. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, the gentleman who wants to find out where you can be located, um, maybe your website, your email address, any your office location, what would you share? Okay, so um, we most of our applications are online. Mm -hmm. One should go to our website, that's www.brighterinvestment.com. You can get to read about what we do, and mm. then you can also apply online. Online. So okay. Are you looking for f possible funders? Who? What message do you have for the entire continent? The businessmen, the industry players, which we are always calling on them to really support education. What? I. Are you okay, or you? If you get more okay. streams of funding, it will so, be good. So, uh, as uh, as I said initially, currently, uh, funders are impact investors and mm. foundation. Mm -hmm. We want to prove this model to prevent uh, to to present to. Uh, these big guys, okay. but these same big guys should realize that all the people working for them once went to school. school. Yeah. So if and they are also complaining that uh, they are not getting the right skills needed. Mm -hmm. So then, if they also look at education as a form of investment, then will will bring out high quality graduates. But okay. to our model. Um, Institutional investors that are looking for a social responsible way of investing their mm -hmm. money and getting a fair return, mm -hmm. uh, brighter investment is also a good approach. Okay. They can, they can Someone is asking, is this an NGO? Or uh, it is not an NGO, I'm sure. It is not. <laughs> it is not an NGO. It's purely. Uh, 
Yeah, so we let, are me, let me give you to explain. <laughs> okay. I know you are not an NGO. Yeah, mm. we are we are not an NGO. If we are an NGO, mm. that means that we can support, let's say, hundred students, and the money is finished. Finished, there, okay. And we can't support anything. Absolutely. Yeah. We want to support very large number of people. As mm. initially I said, the forty percent of 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 workforce coming from Africa. From, yes. Are we going to make them fall or go up? Mm. And to uh, to enable them go up, we have to make sure that our model is sustainable. Enough. That's why there's an income sharing repayment. So this means that our repayments can also be used to support the next cohort of students in the next and the next and the next. Okay. And eventually, right. everybody gets. Education. Okay, Rich and Joy, the discussion is getting interesting, but time yeah. is not on our side. We need to end it here. I believe that when the, when there will be a second time where we'll share some of the interventions, especially the mentorship areas. And exactly. and then I want to host some of your students, those who have graduated, sure. to also share most of the, the benefits and the things that you, you have. So maybe in a second interview, sure. we're going to have such sure. um, people on board. So thank you so much for coming. And mm -hmm. I would want to encourage you. This is a beautiful idea. I, I The people who sat down and came up with this thought, I think um, kudos to them. Sure and with the same mindset of supporting and assisting higher education on the continent. All right, so viewers, this has been AU Talks, and I've been hosting Richard Adakwa, and he is the regional manager of Brighter Investment, and then also Joy Lante, who is the student success manager of Joy of Brighter Investment. And thank you so much for watching. Keep your comments coming in. If you're out there and you want that support, run to them, and they, they are. It is a very credible institution, I might say. The Association of African Universities will never present any brand that is not of quality and standard. Thank you so much for watching. My name has always been Kwesi Sam.